So, the Mavic 3 is fitted with what DJI are now calling O3. It's OcuSync 3, but they're dropping the full names and they're calling it O3. In fact, it's O3+. When coupled with the new DJI RC Pro, it allows a live feed of either 1080p30 or 1080p60. It has a transmission bitrate of up to 15 megabits a second, up to 15 kilometers range, and about 120 milliseconds of latency. However, that remote is only shipped with the Cine model. The standard model comes with what DJI call the RC-N1. This is the same remote they shipped with the A2S. It is OcuSync 2 based. When the Mavic 3 is coupled with the OcuSync 2 based RC-N1, it has a maximum bit rate of 5 megabytes or 5.5 megabytes a second, still supports 1080p 30, 1080p 60, and still supports all of the other features. But it has a reduced bit rate. Now, there is a question mark if the range is less on the RCN1 compared to the RC Pro. DJI don't say anywhere that. All they simply say is the range based on output. But what is clear is the OcuSync 2 based N1 has slightly higher latency and lower bitrate. Whilst the resolution is the same, it will look different through your smart device. And the RC Pro should have a better looking image. Now, DJI have made it clear that the Mavic 3 does not work with the DJI Smart Controller. However, the DJI Smart Controller is also OcuSync 2. It supports range up to 12 kilometers, and it has a bit rate of 12 megabits a second, and it has a, a resolution support of either 720p or 1080p. Now, the real confusing thing in all of this is that DJI will ship this with an OcuSync 2 remote with virtually the same spec as the smart controller, yet it doesn't work. The RC Pro, as nice as it is, is astonishingly expensive. In the UK, £879, and in the US, it's over $1,000. It is OcuSync 3, or OcuSync 3 Plus, but it is still dramatically more expensive than we've seen before. And the real confusing thing in all of this for people, and I'm going to show you guys a chart in a minute, is the fact that we have two OcuSync 2 based remotes, yet one of them will work and one of them won't. The OcuSync 2 based RCN1 does, the OcuSync 2 based smart controller does not. Now, there is still an even weirder situation that happened with the Mavic a 2s For instance, the a 2s supports OcuSync 3, yet they only ever shipped it with the RCN1, which was OcuSync 2. So DJI have put themselves in this position of having an aircraft with one label for the technology and the remote with another. So they're calling the remotes OcuSync and the Craft O3 or O2. You had the Mavic A, sorry, well, the A2S with O3 and the Mavic 3 now with O3+. Plus. The biggest difference is increased bitrate because the Mavic, or the sorry, the A2S supported up to 12 megabits a second, whereas the Mavic 3 supports up to 15. And the A2S supports 1080p 30 whereas the Mavic 3 supports 1080p 60. But this is where all of the confusion has lied. Now, I've put a chart together, which I'm going to show you guys on the screen, and I'm going to share this once it's finished because it isn't quite finished yet, that just walks through all of the different OcuSync systems. So we've got the aircrafts, and then we've got the remotes at the bottom and their compatibility. So, for instance, we've got 
the Mavic 3, the A2S, the Mavic 2, the FPV drone, and the FPV system. And there is some interesting things here, the way DJI label OcuSync, because we've got OcuSync 3 on the A2S and OcuSync 3 on the FPV drone, but they do work very, very differently. So they're both dual band. However, the A2S supports 1080p30, the FPV drone is 720p60, and then you've got Latency, 120, 130 milliseconds. Latency, less than 28. And the big difference, actually, between the FPV system and the rest of it is actually the amount of data rate. So, for instance, if you look on all of the aircraft, Mavic 3, 15 megabits a second, A2S, 12, Mavic 2 Pro, 12, DJI FPV drone, 25 or 50, and the DJI FPV system, 25 or 50. So what DJI are doing on them is driving a lot of data to get the latency down, whereas on these, they're driving less data, but that then allows for improved range, but increases latency. And that is the fundamental difference between the, the systems. Now, if we look at the remote section, I have labeled these up. So we've got the RC Pro, Mavic 3 only. We've got the RCN1, which is A2S and Mavic 3. It has a data rate of 5.5 megabits a second on the Mavic 3 and 12 megabits a second on the A2S. And again, that's something strange. The same remote both on OcuSync 2 or 3, is giving different data rates on different aircrafts. And it's almost that they've gimped the RCN1 when using it with the Mavic 3 and limited its functionality. We do again have the smart controller, OcuSync 2, dual band, 2.4 and 5 gigs, 720p30, 1080p30, but again, 12 megabits a second. But this does work with the A2S and the Mavic 2 series, so it does have more compatibility. Technically, this remote here, which is OcuSync 2, which is the DJI Mavic 2 remote, which I loved, by the way, and I'm really disappointed to see that go, should work with the A2S, but it doesn't. And again, we then have the OcuSync 2 DJI FPV remote, which again should work with this, but it doesn't. So what is clear from these things is DJI have really confused things. My personal belief is the reason the smart controller isn't compatible is simply it's just not up to the task. I don't think it has enough horsepower. Add on top of that the fact that they want to strip you for nearly £900 or $1,100, and I think that it doesn't really encourage them to put a lot of effort into getting it working. That's my personal belief on the situation. Another thing to take into account with the Mavic 3 is the fact that it uses the Fly app and not DJI Go 4. This was another shock and frankly is going to upset a lot of people when they get their drones because the Fly app has so much less functionality than Go 4. Hardly any camera controls, hardly any craft controls and whilst they've been adding stuff, it is ridiculously limited. This is... It's just a number of things on this craft that are very, very strange. It really is.